This is Andy Tube, and this is uh, part two of a little mini series for uh, how to restore a Singer PA style sewing machine motor. Um, just a few things before we get started. This uh, aluminum body part here, uh, if you watch the other slideshow, this is the motor housing. This is the pinion end of the motor housing because that's the pinion. And this end down here is the commutator end cover. Now some call it just the end cover and some call it the commutator end cover. Um, on the end cover This uh, little pie shape piece here with the screw is called the brush cover. There's two of them. There's two brushes, one on each side of the commutator. And the screw, of course, is called the brush cover screw. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, set this up on a little box I rigged up here so that uh, I can don't have to hold it while I do it get my safety thing glass on and this is just the shipping box that it came in and just so I can kind of I think rig it up like this maybe so that we can get a pretty good shot at it hopefully Okay, so I think you're going to be surprised, many of you, on how easy it is to change the brushes. Before I ever did this, it always seemed like some mystery that the Lord High Master, you know, mechanic or repairman had to do. And then when I, first time I changed it, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that was pretty easy. So anyway, um, you've got the machine out of the, or the motor out of the machine, obviously. And then we're going to start by taking off the brush cover. So, and, and these are usually these are left to loosen, and they're usually not um, stuck in there like screws on the machine body are, because hopefully there's never been any oil down here to leave deposits and varnish up. So, there's the little brush cover screw. And then the brush cover just sits on there, so it just comes right off. So remember that from the from the slideshow. Okay, and now we get into the good stuff in here. Get that up pretty close there. And as a matter of fact, I want you to look at a slide that's a close-up picture of this area here so that you get an, a, a good close look at it and uh, what stuff is called as I as I do this and then uh, we'll come back and we'll just do it just change the brush okay so, this is the brush holder. This is like a square brass tube uh, with a little fold over closure on the end. And you can see the spring inside, the brush spring. And this end down here between the brush holder and the copper commutator hmm. uh, here's the copper commutator is the the carbon brush so the brush holder you you holds that uh, carbon brush under pressure with the spring and pushes it against the commutator. So that brush rides along on the commutator. And the here 
is the uh, brush lead terminal. So this wire that's coming from elsewhere in the motor terminates with this little, to me it's kind of like a spring clip, but they call it the terminate, terminal. That terminal sits in a little slot right here and bends around the corner and it applies pressure on it applies pressure on the brush holder. And that's all that keeps the brush holder in place. And the brush holder is all that keeps the, the brush, the carbon brush in place. So when you're going to change it, you just work out that brush holder. I usually go at the back end and, <coughs> and just kind of lift it up like that. And it wants to go flying off because it's, it's spring-loaded, <laughs> right? But there you go. So there you can see the copper commutator a little bit with the carbon black carbon deposits on it. That kind of copper wheel in the center. Okay. And then here is the carbon motor brush. And it has, you can see the little wear pattern, concave, I believe that would be, from riding along the segments of the commutator. And this whole, it has a spring attached to it, right? And it just slides into the brush holder. Ta-da! That's it. Just a square tube and goes in like that. And then it pushes up against the commutator. So, let's take a look uh, at the new brush. I can show you here. So you see how easy it is to pull out the brush and take a look at it any time that you need to. That is the old brush, or the existing brush. And here is the new brush I bought. Hmm, let's see if I can get a better picture of this. Huh? That's not too bad. So you see that the old brush is not worn down maybe maybe 25 percent 20 percent so I definitely would not change the brushes on this machine uh, they're, st they're not damaged they're not cracked or chipped up or you know spring broken or anything like that so um, you know, if you look, like I say, if you look at it next to the new one, it's not worn very much. So, I usually, um, you know, on the machines that my wife uses, uh, I seldom have to change it, but I, I wait till there's like tw only 20 or 15 percent left. My personal feeling is that the original Singer Carbons were of a very high quality and carbons are soft as you're going to see when I show you how to shape the end of this before you would put it in but I think the original Singer carbons from 1960 were of a higher quality it's just my feeling than the stuff on the market today but there is the carbon brush with the spring and usually when you buy the new carbon brushes here's here's another uh, one but it's it's uh, from a different machine it's worn a little bit more and let's see here's another one that this little guy without a spring was sold to me by an eBay seller who said, "Oh, absolutely! This will this will fit uh, the motor. 
in that machine but you can see it's like it's like half the size of a, of the correct one that I bought plus it's rectangle shape and this is square so to get this little guy to work I'd have to sand down one side of it to get it to fit in the holder the the narrow side of that rectangular one fits fits okay in here in the square but the the wider rectangle side does not it's like a you know 0.5 millimeter or something so I'd have to I'd have to sand it down or something to get it to fix so let me back back out here a little bit okay so um, like I said here's here's my existing one and I'm just going to keep it that's the existing brush holder that's from a different machine but here's here's my new one and you see most of the time these just come flat on the end and the Singer repairman you know this this end right here and the Singer repairman that I have talked to over the years always told me that that you should make that curved a little bit to fit on the commutator so it gets a full contact um, because otherwise it's it doesn't do like full power and then you just have to wait for it to wear down and then you got all that carbon dust and so forth so uh, I think I think a lot of them had their own little way of doing it you know um, my my way is to to find something about the same uh, circumference or, or diameter of that commutator which in my case uh, is this broken metal broom handle broke off <laughs> and I take my sandpaper and I just wrap it on there and hold it and then I will take my square carbon here and I'll put it on there and gently hold it at a, as much of a 90 degree angle to this surface as I can and I will gently start rubbing it on there and I can see carbon coming off on the paper and falling on the manila paper and I can look at the end and see that it's starting to get a little concave and there it doesn't have to be perfect but it is a little concave now hard to hard to focus um, and it's it's enough I'm satisfied with that I don't want to um, get this stuff out of the way I don't want to you know grind it too much because I'm just grinding away the, the longevity of it so see if we can get this uh, back in now right that's the goal so you see my uh, brush lead terminal has kind of kind of popped up here huh it's kind of popped out of that groove so I'll just push it back in and then I'm going to take my a brush holder with my existing brush in this case or with you know your your new brush and what you want to be sure is that 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 concave curve of it sits that way against the commutator 
you don't want it with just the curved points hitting the commutator. You want it with the whole curve. curve. And the way to remember that is this uh, bearing housing right here is, is uh, round in the same way the commutator. So I would test it here to be sure, say yeah, okay, I've got that right. Then I'm going to come down here and slide that brush into that area and start pushing it by holding the holding the brush holder in my in my right hand there the brass and just gently start pushing it towards the commutator and be extra careful when you go from the spring on to the brush okay and then you see how that brush lead terminal wants to keep popping up so I'm going to push it back down in there because that pressure on that and I knew this was going to be hard to show let me get it the, the come back out here a little bit the pressure of that um, brush lead terminal, that what I call the little spring clip, is uh, tougher than you think. And it puts a lot of pressure against the brush holder to keep it from moving. So I think I've got now my brush holder maneuvered onto the end of the carbon brush, but my, my brush lead uh, terminal is still in place and it's you know it's stiff to push so let me just keep pushing now here's the deal you don't want the brass to touch the commutator only the carbon brush should touch the commutator commutator if if the uh, brush wears down so much that the spring hits it, the commutator, boom, sparks, fire, done. So you've got to get this brass holder in enough to put the cover back on. And you can see where the edge of the cover is going to sit right on that curve. So if the back end of the brush holder is even with that curve, you're in good shape and you're still about a sixteenth of an inch distance between the commutator and the brass holder and that's perfect that's the tolerance then I'm just going to be sure that my holder is seated all the way down in there and it is and I'm going to make sure that my brush lead or spring clip is seated and everything's tight and then I'm going to put my brush cover on and I'm going to make sure that it sits flush all the way around that way when I look in here I can see the hole for the for the screw but by checking this you know you've got the the brush holder in far enough that this brush cover can sit there flush and tight. Then you're going to put your uh, brush cover screw and tighten it back up. And you just changed, changed or removed and reinstalled the brush on a singer PA style motor. So we didn't, we did not clean the commutator. You know, we didn't brush out all the old carbon dust or anything else. We just quickly and easily uh, checked the carbon, replaced it if necessary, and then we would go and do the other side. And it, because that uh, brush lead terminal can come
popping out of there what I call the spring clip I just do one at a side unless I have the whole cover off and I'm you know redoing the, the motor and stuff but just do one at a time and a little review about the carbons get this back down here I don't know if you can make out the black spots all over this but um, that's my new one new one uh, the, the new one that the guy sold me that's not for this motor or machine um, whether you buy this uh, from Singer Parts Online or So Classic or eBay or Amazon, um, you know, wherever you buy it, make sure they guarantee it's going to fit your motor. And if you give them the motor number, you know, like this was the, the PA9-8, and this was taken out of a Singer 403A, they should be able to tell you. So I've got to do a return with this one uh, fellow on eBay, you know, because he guaranteed me. So I actually bought three sets. And uh, the set of two of these was $7 and something. And a set of four of these that are uh, almost the exact perfect size was 10 bucks with free shipping. So this was a good bargain on eBay. Problem was the spring that comes, the, the seller sent with that is a little, it's a little bit like these are two springs together. They're a little bit cheesy. Yeah. Anyway, it's two springs. That's two springs. They're a little bit cheesy, and the little circle protrusion that the that the spring would clip onto is smaller than the original Singer's, but the spring size is the original uh, diameter. So they don't stay on. They, they, you could use the spring and it would probably work fine but but my feeling is still um, use the original equipment um, if the brushes are still good don't replace them and if you do replace the brushes because it, you know it's time or it's damage um, check to see if you can't reuse the original spring they just kind of twist off the end of the brush and I feel the original springs are better than most of the new ones I can find so I had a vintage uh, Singer sewing machine that I wanted to keep now you know how to you know pop out the brushes and see their condition and you might want to think you know for 10 bucks buy a pair of brushes and and just keep them put them in a you know paper envelope and s stick them in your sewing drawer someplace so that if the ones you have wear out five or ten years from now and you, you know at least you have one set of brushes available you know I mean like the Singer uh, 404 I think they only made like 400,000 of them or a half million and the Singer 301A's I think they only made 500,000 401A 700,000 so you know you got 300 million people just in the United States I have no idea what the world population is but there's a finite supply so but now you know how easy, wasn't that really, wasn't that easy? You know, take out the motor, take off the brush cover by removing the brush cover screw, gently loosen that uh, brass brush holder and don't let it come flying off. Pull it out, check your carbons, say, ah, that's okay, that looks good. Put it back in, 
put the cover back on, put the motor back in the machine, you're good. Thanks a lot for watching. And please come back to Andy Coop, Andy Tube. Take care.